انتشار الجريمة يؤدي إلى زعة الأمان أو الأمن في أي مجتمع وبالتالي يؤثر على الوسائل الأخرى سواء الاقتصادية أو الاجتماعية أو خلافة هي آفة من آفات المجتمع تؤدي إلى تقويض كيانات المجتمعات عامة حيث أن الجريمة تستنزف طاقات كبيرة من الشباب من الأيدي العاملة من الاقتصاد الوطني How do we go about countering organized crime? How do we go about corruption? We can spend millions following up once a crime has happened, but we should invest in crime prevention efforts. I think traditionally the UN ODC mandate efforts and technical assistance was basically centered on criminal justice sectors. In the past we've always focused on sort of anti-corruption agencies and rolling out our work to law enforcement officials. Prosecutors, law enforcement, judges. For a long time there's been an understanding that crime prevention and criminal justice involves engaging the entire community. After the 13 crime congress, the approach shift to a new level of stakeholders, concentrating also in the educational sector. In 2015, member states unanimously adopted a declaration, and that declaration includes a very prominent provision saying that we need education to help our citizens be useful in crime prevention and criminal justice internationally. And from that came the idea for the Education for Justice initiative. Through a collaboration and engagement involving children, youth, young adults, and educators, Education for Justice co-created materials targeting all levels of the education sector. I think that the نظر إلى الثلاث مراحل سواء المرحلة الابتدائية أو المتوسطة أو المرحلة الثانوية تمثل أهمية متساوية يجب تهيئة النشأ من هذه المرحلة المبتدئة ومن ثم الوصول معه في التقدم بالمراحل العمر. حتى المرحلة الثانوية لاستنساخ إنسان يخدم مجتمع. One of the interesting things about E4J is that we offer a comprehensive set of educational tools from primary education all the way through secondary to universities. Those materials are, you know, range from very educational and somewhat um, standard materials to fun and innovative and interesting. Uh, ideas and, and concepts. We first looked at the young ones, starting with five years old. You cannot really teach them on crime issues, but what you can teach them is the right values. The materials developed around the Zorbs engage youngsters with values that are meant to help create a just and peaceful world. There's an episodic animated show, comic books, and even a comic creator tool where kids can create their own stories using the different characters on Zorbify.com. I love the soap, so, <laughs> so they're very appealing, I think, even to, to the child and every adult. Another E4J tool created for primary school children is an app that helps them deal with potential violence directed towards them. De la chica rompe el silencio. A mí me ha encantado. Se trataba de derrotar a los monstruos y de contestarles adecuadamente. Chuka, I think that's a very important educational tool because I think gender-based violence is really something that we all need to focus on. Qué bueno que se brinden juegos educativos porque encontrar de verdad un juego educativo para una clase para algo que vaya a formar es muy difícil. Parents are struggling and teachers are struggling with how to teach, how to be safe online. In order to do this, UNODC has also been creating fun, interactive, educational spaces to teach children about potential online dangers and empower them against harassment and cybercrime. One such space is in El Salvador, where a permanent exhibition has been established in the country's Tin Marin Children's Museum, which is visited by over 200,000 young people each year. What was inspiring is seeing some of the stakeholders describing what they saw there. While they are going to be playing with toys, they're going to be learning at the same time. In a future, ya sea eh, si ven a alguien que está en riesgo, ellos puedan decirles, yo aprendí en el Team Marine que 
eh, no debo de hacer eso. When they come here, they are completely overwhelmed. They say it's the best experience in my life. Some of the materials that we put together for the younger crowd, my reaction has always been, I wish I had them when I was uh, that age. تعليم من أرج العدالة ومحاولة وضع هذا التصور في أذهان الأطفال بوسائل تعليمية حديثة سواء عن طريق الألعاب الإلكترونية عن طريق الصور المتحركة تؤدي إلى ترسيخ المفاهيم في ذهن الطفل. Moving to secondary education meant that there had to be a way to nurture students' interests in the issues that matter to them. What we're talking about is their future, so let's include them. Teenagers, they want to be taken seriously. We had to involve teenagers right from the beginning in brainstorming about every single tool that we did. I think an achievement by itself is the Model UN. Model United Nations is a set of conferences where young people play the role of member states delegates and they must come up with a resolution by the end of a short conference. One of the first things we worked on is our guide for Model UN. This is really a one-of-a-kind guide that ties UN mandates to a resource that is usable for you know, the general population. I think it's going to be uh, very well received and, and very popular. The education for justice has helped us get trained and learn about the issues that we need to train uh, other young people in Afghanistan. I think the E4J initiative is, is going to be able to really impact really thousands of students by allowing them to be able to engage on those mandates that maybe before have been a little bit inaccessible. Looking towards gaming, a series of hackathons were held in order to engage students around the UN's Sustainable Development Goals and UNODC's crime mandate. We were able to show through these hackathons that young people have a lot to contribute in the crime prevention and criminal justice field, especially through their creativity and innovation. They have very interesting ideas about how to use technology to address rule of law issues. They've come up with solutions which we had never thought that would be possible at that age. I'm actually hoping by doing this it could cause a chain reaction. We are helping other people and we are helping in our society. Looking towards the offline world, a series of board games were developed to get students to interact in classrooms. One of them focuses on cybercrime. Students learn about the different cyber threats facing the world and how they can work together to stop them, all while having fun. Another game targets the development of integrity. Play for Integrity is a game that was developed with youth in Nepal and is a twist on snakes and ladders, where in each part of the game, you have to make an integrity decision about something that relates to your school, neighborhood, or city. That is one of the greatest ways to reflect the spirit of the UN Convention Against Corruption, which calls for people to participate in holding societies accountable. Another game that was developed is called Labyrinth and revolves around the different factors that lead to violent extremism. Teachers who have been asked to deal with radicalization in their classroom we needed a resource to engage with. And this is a very ludic way of, of talking about these issues, which the students enjoy because it's a game, but it also has the educational aspect. Because they are exposed to these different scenarios, they learn and they realize, oh, this actually happened to my neighbor. I've heard about this on the news. They can relate. Another form of engagement was through a series of youth conferences that tackled issues such as corruption. More than 500 youth from Kenya discussed how to go about good governance, how to tackle corruption, and they came up with a roadmap that was then presented to the government of Kenya. That was really impressive. In order to kickstart conversations in high school, a series of two-minute videos were created. What is key is that they watch it in school, that they start discussing reaching out with their peers. We have 
a competition for youth who submit artistic pieces, you know, songs, spoken word, rap songs, etc., on thematic areas like corruption, terrorism. And it's impressive what they can come up with. It's really, it's really cool. Step out and find your place. They didn't have a choice. You could be their only voice. Migrant rights are human rights. We have to protect them. Refugees, domestic workers, and prisoners too. It's the least we can do. Focusing E4J's attention on creating content for university students required a different approach. We had a long discussion what we should do with regard to Deutsche level. We wanted to empower professors from around the world. We realized what is really important in today's world is this interaction between the educators, the lecturers, and the students. So we engaged with professors from around the world to create the content. Through expert group meetings, multiple peer reviews, and in-depth consultations over the last few years, more than 600 academics and experts from 114 countries have contributed to creating the E4J University module series. Coming up with these uh, E4J modules that will be available open access globally gives instructors and students a tremendous advantage. So whether you're teaching, you know, in Kazakhstan, South Africa, the U.S., or anywhere else, you'll have access to the combined knowledge of a lot of people globally. I never saw this before in the UN, this kind of comprehensive exercise of having training materials, modules that are validated at this extensive level of peer review. There are nine different topic areas which include counterterrorism, wildlife trafficking, cybercrime, firearms, trafficking in persons, organized crime, criminal justice, anti-corruption, as well as integrity and ethics. I am hoping uh, that lecturers, the faculty, would find it easier to put in ethical content in their courses, even if they don't normally teach ethics. And I'm hoping that that will have an impact on the way the students uh, see themselves and live their lives beyond the practice of the professions that they take up. We have basically developed a one-stop shop platform for educators, so they can use the models for their own teaching. UNODC did the research for us and condensed the information. And what is very interesting is that it is in a module system which allows me to pick and choose. So there's less work for, you know, sort of course design work for you to do, um, but you can still sort of make it your own. And it is a ready-made material which they don't have to follow blindly. It's an easy, fast way to, um, to teach such a complex phenomenon. It saves me a lot of time. The feedback that we got from these academics was, hey, this is really impressive, that not only are the tools amazing and easy for us to use, but what is impressive and what is so helpful is that you bring us together so that we can exchange with each other, because nobody's doing that. Workshops I've attended where actually the professors co-created and co-validated these modules. The most outstanding comments at the end of all these workshops were, this workshop alone has already transformed my teaching. Now, this initiation by UNODC is superb and is a show of sincere love for the world. This curricula it can be very important also in educating people who will soon be policy makers, will soon be prominent people within their communities and allow them to be able to contribute quite directly to preventing crime. This is our dream, that the next generation is making the world a little bit better and we support them in making the world a little bit better. With our tools, young people will understand that they can make a very positive contribution to society and that the rule of law is not something that needs to be distant from them and reserved to law enforcement, police, prosecutors and judges, but that it's something the whole of society can be engaged in. To educate a new generation which grows up with those values is very important and convinces those in power that they have to change. I think we are creating a new generation. A new generation that uh, is replacing the me for the week.